Hello, my name is Rainer Gro. Uh, I'm uh, supervised by Professor Weaver, and today I'll be giving a uh, short overview of some of my work on the mass optimization of uh, variable stiffness wing panels. Uh, I'll start with a short introduction um, about some of the research about variable st stiffness composites, specifically uh, composites that use uh, robotic toe steering to control the direction of a fiber path throughout a composite ply. Then I'll give a brief, brief overview of a new manufacturing technique that has been developed at the University of Bristol and compare this to some of the limitations of more developed uh, manufacturing techniques such as automated fiber placement. The meat of the presentation will be about a minimum mass optimization study of a representative wing panel in compression with uh, certain buckling and static failure constraints. The aim of the presentation is to show some of the benefits of variable stiffness uh, laminates in terms of mass savings and post-buckling stiffness. Research into optimizing the structural performance of composite laminates by spatially varying the fiber orientations has been going on ongoing since the 1970s. In recent years, advancements in uh, automated fiber placements have made the production of these laminates a reality and sparked an, incre an increased interest in the field. Typically, fiber orientations are steered in one direction and then shifted in a direction perpendicular to this to cover the whole plant form. This specific fiber orientation shown here has been shown to double the buckling load of a flat panel compared to an optimized straight fiber design. This is possible because the stiffness distribution across the plate that, occurs, uh, that arises as a result of the fiber steering favorably redistributes pre-buckling stresses towards supported edges and thereby alleviates the load at the central part of the panel that is more prone to buckling. Variable stiffness composites have also been used or have been shown to reduce the stress concentrations around holds by, by aligning the fiber paths with the directions of uh, principal stress. Furthermore, variable stiffness composites have been shown to improve the buckling performance of fuselage window sections and also blade stiffened wing panels. Finally, toe steering creates the opportunity for, uh, for designing blended structures by facilitating smooth transitions between areas with different layout requirements. In trees, for example, there's a smooth, smooth transition of fibers from the trunk into the branch in order to uh, strengthen the connecting joint. And we could apply this concept to airspace structures by applying it, for example, to fuselage wind, wing connections. Advancements in automated fiber placement, or AFP, have made the production of these laminates a reality. This technology is basically, uh, has basically arisen by bootstrapping the toe steering uh, uh, concept to, or, to manufacturing uh, technologies that are, have already uh, been well established in the industry. However, this approach has a, a number of limitations, and to overcome these, the CTS, or continuous toe shearing technique, has been developed at the University of Bristol. In AFP, steering is accomplished by bending the toes in plane, which can lead to local fiber wrinkling on the inside radii of a toe, and therefore limits the minimum steering radius of curvature. Furthermore, if individual fiber paths are placed next to each other by um, Shifting the reference path in a specific direction, toe gaps or overlaps are inevitably required to cover the whole surface. In CTS, however, the fibers are steered by shearing, in-plane shearing, fiber bundles at the point of application. This means that much tighter steering radii of curvature can be accomplished, and toes, uh, toe gaps and overlaps are completely eliminated by tessellating toes on the substrate, as can be seen in here. One inherent feature of the CTS process is that the thickness of a, of a toe is coupled to the amount of steering. This means that if a CTS laminate is cured on a flat tool plate, one side remains flat, while the other resembles a curved a panel. We found out that this asymmetric thickness cross-section means that the plate behaves more like a, sh like a curved shell rather than a flat plate because of the inherent initial curvature of the neutral axis. This is shown by this red curve here. This is important because the initial curvature of the neutral uh, surface 
creates coupling between the membrane deformations and the bending deformations and therefore increases the load carrying capability of the panel. Furthermore, by combining the stiffness variations or the fiber variations with the uh, thickness buildup, we can further enhance the load redistribution towards supported edges, the edges of the plate shown here, and therefore create a sort of internal panel breaker, very much the same way as a stiffener uh, works on a current, as a blade stiffened aircraft wing. So what we decided to do is to run a mass optimization study of a representative aircraft wing skin panel located between two stringers on a commercial jet aircraft. The, the panel we assumed is a, it's a square panel of 250 millimeters in dimension and simply supported on all four edges. Due to the bending of the wing, what the top surface or the bottom surface is in compression, which means which is represented by this 250 kilonewton compression load, which translates to about a one kilonewton per millimeter end loading, which is very typical of a, of a commercial uh, jet airliner. We also applied some um, constraints to the optimization, mainly the CTS manufacturing constraints that the fiber orientations can't change more than 70 uh, degrees across the laminate. And the laminate is also required to be balanced and symmetric and is not allowed to buckle or fail statically at the design load of 250 kilonewtons. The buckling problem is in this case solved by a, a linear eigenvalue problem and the static failure is applied using the Tsai Wu failure criterion at every single point throughout all the, lamin all the plies within the laminate. Furthermore, a 4,000 microstrain compressive str uh, strain limit is applied, which is kind of a very conservative damage tolerance um, limit placed um, uh, on, on laminates in the industry. This problem is solved using an in-house analytical shell model and coupled with the genetic algorithm capabilities in MATLAB. This approach is, chose, is uh, preferred over the finite element over a finite element um, over the finite element method because in finite elements we need very fine meshes in order to act, act, accurately capture the uh, fiber distribution across the plate and this greatly increases the run times so we decided to use this in-house code to speed the process up a bit. So looking at some of the results on the top left hand corner you can see a table that has three three designs, one straight fiber design and two toastier designs. The straight fiber design um, is comprised of just 0, plus minus 45 and 90 degree plies and it follows the classic lamination guidelines followed um, in the airspace industry. And this is used as a baseline to compare the two toastier designs beneath it. The first toastier design does not have a, the compressive strain limit which means that at the design load of 250 kilonewtons we get a um, compressive strain of 5490 and this results in mass savings of 30 percent compared to the straight fiber design. In the second case this compressive strain limit has been applied and the mass reduction reduce, reduces to 21 percent compared to the straight fiber design. The reason why we can save mass um, is apparent from, from these two or from these four figures here where the first is the buckling failure uh, or the reserve factor and this is the Tsai Wu failure criterion where one in each case is equal to failure and compared to the straight fiber design both of them have moved much closer to one which means that these toasteer designs take advantage of the, the larger design space to find a better compromise between the buckling failure, load, uh, failure mode and the um, static failure load. The reason why the first toastier design, which does not have the uh, compressive strain require, uh, requirement imposed, uh, works better than the second one can be seen from these fiber pads. So this is the um, uh, toastier one design, where in this, this um, ply you can clearly see that the fiber paths want to basically increase the stiffness towards the edges where we have the supports so that we're redirecting loads to the supported edges. The second ply is basically is in, introduced by the optimizer in order to imp, impart shear strength and strength in the lateral direction. And overall, this laminate has 24 plies. But the second toastier design, we again see the same ply, big ply here, which is basically um, acts to maximize the buckling load. But in the second case, the fibers are now 
directed more in the loading direction in order to impart global stiffness. And overall, we have to add four more plies to the design in order to uh, meet the buckling requirement. And this is really uh, the key of the problem that as we increase, as we imply this micro, 4,000 microstrain requirement, there is a trade-off between local stiffness tailoring for buckling and global stiffness tailoring. Um, and these, are, these, are, uh, these, these, these two requirements are clashing and therefore we lose some of the mass reductions um, in, the, in the second uh, optimization case. So finally we decided to look at some of the post-buckling behavior. This wasn't any part of the optimization study, but it was actually quite a nice add-on to the results. If you look at a straight fiber design, upon buckling, the post-buckling stiffness is half of the stiffness of the pre-buckling stiffness, which is so, shown by this black line. And the, the, both of the uh, uh, toasteer designs actually show a higher post-buckling stiffness. And the reason why we see two curves for the green and for the red is due to the shell effect. So if a shell buckles with the curvature, with the initial curvature, or against the initial curvature, we will have two different stiffnesses. But both of the two stiffnesses in either case, both of these pads, are stiffer than the straight fiber design. So in the straight fiber design, we have about a 50% reduction, and in the toast seared case, we're about 85%. But we do have to be careful in that we can actually get unstable post-buckling behavior with these shell structures, as is, as is shown by this brown line down here. But as long as we make sure that the, that the post-buckling behavior is not unstable, we actually see that these low drops in this red curve, which is typical of curved structure, is actually very, very small. So it's less than 1%, which shows that the curvature of these panels is very benign compared to cylindrical panels where these um, low drops would be um, much more extreme. All, all, they can almost be up to 40%. So to conclude, I've um, given a short overview of um, my work on the map mass optimization of barrel stiffness panels, specifically applied to uh, the, the airspace domain. And I've shown that mass savings of up to 30% can be achieved. Um, but this is heavily dependent on the strain constraint limits that are imposed uh, in the optimization. Furthermore, the post-buckling stiffness can be increased at the same time, and this opens up a lot of new possibilities for exploiting the nonlinear regimes and maybe even um, getting rid of the buckling requirements so that we can exploit the, the nonlinear post-buckling regime. In the future, some experimental validation studies will be needed in order to um, move the technology to the next stage. Um, and uh, I hope that future students will continue this work. So uh, in concluding, I'd like to thank uh, my sponsors, especially the EPSRC, for funding me at uh, the uh, Doctoral Training Center at the University of Bristol and Airbus for hosting this talk. If you would like to um, um, I have more information about this, feel free to contact me at my email address or there's a conference paper which we recently published at the AIAA conference. Thank you.